could we find the polynomial function of this graph? How would you do it? So we're given the x-intercepts. We're given one point, which is the y-intercept, which has a value of 36. And we know we're dealing with a fourth degree polynomial. With this information, how can we find and write polynomial function that corresponds to this graph? So we have an x-intercept at 1, another x-intercept at 2, and another one at 3. So we can write the zeros of the polynomial function, which are x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3. Now, once you know the zeros of the polynomial function, you could write the factors. So for the zero x equal 1, the factor is going to be x minus 1. If you set x minus 1 equal to 0 and solve for x, you'll get that x will have a value of positive 1. When x is equal to positive 2, the factor that corresponds to that is going to be x minus 2. And for x equals 3, the factor that corresponds to that one is x minus 3. Now, we need to pay attention to the multiplicity of each 0. If we focus on the graph, notice that at this point, at x equals 1, the curve, it touches the x-axis. But at x equals 2, it crosses over the x-axis. What you need to know is that when it crosses over, the multiplicity is odd. Typically, the multiplicity will be 1 if not 3. When it touches the x-axis but doesn't cross over, the multiplicity will be even, most likely 2. Here, it crosses over, so the multiplicity is going to be 1. Now, how do you know if it's 1 or 3 or 2 or 4? The answer has to do with the degree of the polynomial function. These exponents, the sum of the multiplicity values, must equal the overall degree of the polynomial. So 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 4. We're good. If we were to try the other possibilities, it won't work. For instance, for this one, at x equals 1, it touches, which means it's going to be a 2 or 4. If we try a 4, that's already going to be too much. So this has to be a 2, which means these, they have to be a 1 in order for it to be a fourth degree polynomial. So now at this point, what we need to do is set this equal to y, and we need to add a coefficient in front of the polynomial function. Using the y-intercept, using this point, 0, 36, we need to solve for the constant a. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace x with 0, and we're going to replace y with 36. So we're going to have 36 is equal to a times 0 minus 1 squared times 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 3. Negative 1 squared is just 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. And 36 divided by 6 is 6. So a is equal to 6. Now that we have our a value, we can go ahead and write the equation of the polynomial function in factored form. So it's going to be y is equal to a times x minus 1 squared. I mean, we could replace a with 6. I forgot to do that. So it's 6 times x minus 1 squared times x minus 2 times x minus 3. So this is the answer in factored form. Now, sometimes 
you may need to convert the answer from its factored form to standard form. To do that, we just need to FOIL. So x minus 1 squared, I'm going to expand that. So let's begin by foiling these two factors. So this is going to be x times x, which is x squared. And then this is going to be negative x, negative x, negative 1 times negative 1, that's positive 1. Now let's factor the remaining two. So, I mean, let's FOIL the remaining two factors. So we're going to have x squared. This is going to be negative 3x. And then negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. Now, let's go ahead and simplify. Negative x minus x is negative 2x. And negative 3x minus 2x, that's going to be negative 5x. So we have this. All right, this one is going to be a little bit longer. So now let's go ahead and FOIL what we have now. x squared times x squared. That's going to be x to the fourth. And then x squared times negative 5x, that's going to be negative 5x cubed. And then x squared times 6, that's going to be 6x squared. Now I'm going to line it up in an interesting way so that it'll be easy to combine like terms. Now let's move on to negative 2x. Negative 2x times x squared. That's negative 2x squared, and I'm going to put that here. Negative 2x times negative 5x is positive 10x squared. And then negative 2x plus 6, that's negative 12x. And then here we have 1 times x squared. So that's positive x squared, or just 1x squared. And then 1 times negative 5x, which will be negative 5x. And the 1 times 6 is 6. So we could bring this down. Negative 5 plus negative 2. We're adding, by the way. It's going to be negative 7. 6 plus 10 plus 1, that's 17. Negative 12 minus 5, that's also 17, but negative. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to distribute the 6. So it's going to be 6x to the 4th, 6 times negative 7, that's going to be negative 42, and then times x cubed. Now, 6 times 17, 6 times 10 is 60, 6 times 7 is 42. 60 plus 42 is going to be 102. So this is going to be positive 102x squared, and then negative 102x. Finally, 6 times 6 is 36. So if I didn't miss anything, if I didn't miss any negative signs or didn't mess up any multiplication, this is what the answer should be in standard form. So if you have a test, you need to pay attention to the directions on the test, because sometimes your teacher or professor, they may want you to write the answer in factored form. If that's the case, the problem is going to be quick and simple. You could finish it quickly. If not, you may have to put it in standard form, which that's going to take some time. So that's basically it for this video. By the way, for those of you who want more content relating to polynomial functions, like how to graph them and things like that, or how to factor them, check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting some video content there that's going to be related to this entire material. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.